Okay, so I've got all my ESCs programmed up correctly. I've done all my motor directions as per the instructions. Now what I'm going to do is just tidy up some of this wiring. So what I'm going to do is, just like I did the little Z bend inside the boom, I'm going to do the same here with the motor wiring, but instead of a bit of heat shrink tube, I'm using just one of the, the zip tie cable ties. And just to snug that up, and that one's done. Next I'll do this ESC. One of the things I'm trying to do, not only is make the wiring a bit neater by doing this, but I'm trying to keep this centre section free. Um, and there's a very good reason for that, which I'll discuss um, later on. There's a bit of a surprise coming. Alright, so that's how it's four done. Got them nice and neat. Okay, uh, where's my side cutters? They've disappeared. Yes, they have. Right, let's run up from those up next. Alright, so next thing I want to do is take those four servo wires. What I like to do is just get the four ends roughly at about the same point. Alright, and pop a cable tie on those. Yeah, about four centimeters back. Just to hold them neatly. And then just sort of loom them up a bit. Now I might actually do something a bit different here. I might just sort of bring them around sort of a bit like that. Now I know the Paris board's going to be sort of sitting about here. So actually that's not too bad. I might just tuck them in there. So I'll grab another cable tie. I go through a lot of cable ties when I do my builds. Okay, cool. All right, that's done. Wonderful. All right, now just trim up those cable ties. Uh, just going to leave the power loom sitting in the middle there for now. So, it's not bad. Okay, cool. Alright, so. Now what I'm going to do, now that I've got all that neat and tidy, I can actually attach my top plate. So, top plate. Um, there is no right and wrong way to do this. It's the same either side. So I'm just going to leave the servo leads hanging out through the hole in the middle and set the plate on top there. Now, I want to make really sure, have a good look, that there's no wires going to be pinched between the plate and the blocks. Okay. Alright. All looking great. So now I'm going to start putting some screws into the top plate. Now, as per the manual, it's the manual states not to use lock tight on the screws on the top plate so I'm just going to get two that are sort of opposite each other into place first now I don't actually want to get these two these too tight just yet and I'll show you why in a minute but I just want to get some screws into place just so that it's all being held together. Okay, so I've sort of gone around and done a few different corners. Now, just I'm going to pick it up and have a really good look and make sure there is absolutely no jammed up wiring anywhere. I can make sure nothing is going to pinch anywhere at all I'm pretty good I'm happy with that great so fantastic 
All right, so now what I can do is go through and just get these other screws into place. Now, I'm not going to tighten them up yet because I do have to uh, do one more step before these screws get tightened. So I'm just going to get all the outer ones into place. Notice I'm not doing the tail ones and I'm not doing the front gimbal ones. I won't actually bother putting those ones at the front gimbal into place at all until I've actually mounted uh, my boom into the front gimbal mount. I'm going to do that um, right at the very end of the build. So they're just going to stay out for now. Okay, you can imagine if I got to this point and discovered that one of these pins had dud threads in them and I had to pull all of this back apart to get that pin out, I would be not very happy. Okay, cool. Alright, now that's got me up to my next step. I'm just going to sit the wires, those wires down in there for now, just to keep them out of the way. Now, in the instructions it will show you, the diagram that shows you the motor angles will also tell you you need to put a bit of a cross angle on the motors. Basically the front two motors point tilt back and the back two motors tilt forward. Now the instructions on this will probably say five degrees. I tend to go a little bit less than that, but what I do is I grab a level application in my phone and I sit the phone on the motor it's going to be a bit hard to see at the angle and what I do I want to tilt that motor one way or another to match the five degrees that the instruction says all right so at the moment that one's at seven degrees it's actually saying maybe six. So I'm going to tilt that one back a little. This is why I haven't tightened these up. And I'm going to keep measuring that till I get the correct angle tilt on that. Alright. That's just a tiny bit too much. Still a bit much. Lovely. Now do this one. Perfect. Not bad by eye. I can already see this one's way too much. And lucky last. Not quite enough. Beautiful. Alright, cool. Now that I've measured and set those angles, it might take you a little bit more time to do that because you know, um, it can be a bit fiddly if the first few times. Now that I've got those set, I can actually really tighten up all these screws. Didn't put that one in. Titch, titch. And clamp down those motor angles. And do them up nice and tight. that one I'm going to need to use two screwdrivers. Okay. This time I'm just going to pick it up and do it by hand in my hand rather than down onto the bench.
and that is that part of the frame basically done. For the sake of convenience, I actually pop the top half of the tail on at this point in time. Okay, so three screws through the top plate. Now you can actually build the kit without the tail and without the gimbal mount if you don't want to fly with the camera at first. It's entirely up to you. Um, the tail actually is quite handy as another orientation aid. It's really easy to spot the tail in flight hanging out the back of the, of the, the airframe. And just, you know, always lets you know where the rear of the airframe is. Now, at the moment, so as you might have noticed the fact that it's sort of a bit flexible at the back of the, tr the back of this tail here. So what we do is we take two more of our pins and they screw in at the back. Now there will be a little bit of um, a gap where this pin goes in. So I'm going to just move all this around so you can sort of watch, so you can, the guys can watch. There will be a bit of a gap when I do these pins up, so we're actually going to end up putting a bit of flex on this tail. But don't let that worry you. It's interesting, that hole's a bit tight in the carbon. That's right, got started. So it's not going to hurt anything, the fact that you're actually going to be uh, Squeezing this up a little bit. Let's uh, pin one. Yep. Another option you can do at the tail is actually re drill these holes if you want and use some of the red alloy spaces. It's entirely up to you. One of the cool things about all the Scarab designs is they're actually quite open to modification. A lot of guys get, seem to get a little worried about the right way to put these things together. Um, and in reality, there is no right way to put these things together. You can build all sorts of shapes, designs, uh, modify it, do it differently. Um, provided your arms are rigid and they're in the right spots and the board is close to the center of all that um, you can mess around with these things to your heart's content and modify them any which way you want there you go cool and there's the two spaces in the back of the tail. Alright, so I'm now actually going to set this aside. I actually don't need to play with any of this anymore for a while. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing my electronics setup, which is all based on this top plate which sits above all this. So I'm actually going to go away and do all the electronics with this sitting aside. So I don't need this right for the next few steps. That can just hibernate and I'm going to make my little um, what I'd like to call my core electronic core my control core I'm going to look, build my little control module up to sit in the top there like that okay ready to go I'm going to build that all up separately on this board on this plate and then later on we'll come and attach the two pieces together and that's when we'll connect up the servo leads into the controller board. Now, if I had, an, as I mentioned before, if I had something like a Nazaro I was going to use on this instead of um, a Paris board, there's the perfect, sp plenty of space in there to put the Nazar. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside for now and come back and do the electronics shortly.